what's up guys back again with another video so last episode I believe we learned about the do while loop and stuff like that but uh we're gonna go back in time and learn about another type of array called the multi-dimensional array and um yeah it's pretty fascinating and it's pretty complex so uh with this kind of stuff you gotta use your brain so anyway so what is a multi-dimensional array it's an array but it's an array of arrays basically it's arrays inside of one array basically so yeah so to declare a multi-dimensional array variable uh, specify each index um, like this so int uh, we got to give it a name right so falafel I don't even know what a falafel is to be honest I don't even know if I'm spelling it right um, then we got to have these of course if we're you know initializing it and then uh, new int and right here and these two of course we declare the index. So the first one is for the row. How many rows do you want? And um, yeah, so that would be four. We'll have four. You can have whatever you want. And uh, and then for the second thing, this will be how many columns that we'll have. So five. So that means in uh, there will be like four arrays, and then each array will have five items in it, basically. And all of this will be one array, basically, because it's an array of arrays. So this can be pretty confusing if you don't know exactly what this will look like. But if we want to print this out, we can, um, you know, run a certain program. Let's uh, try. Well, first, we'll just um, print out, you know, one one little atom, element of it. So if you want to target a specific element of this, we can do, uh, let's say we want like second row and the third item. So second row, you know, would be one because it's zero based. And then third item would be two. So one, two. And if we print that out, we should get zero because if you're initializing something and you don't uh, give it some default values it'll just set it to zero when you're making an array of course so that's good we get zero and let's test this out further by setting this to equal something so we'll set it to equals 56 and so we'll print this back out and we should get 56 which is good now we have 56 so anyway, um, let's go ahead and print out the whole array. So to do that, we can have a for loop here. And um, so yeah, we're gonna have a variable. So this one, we'll call this i, the first index, we'll call that i. So for int i equals zero, and then i is lo um, less than, and we choose how many are in there. So we have, you know, we have four uh, rows, and then i plus plus every time, of course. There we go. And so that'll give us the um, target the rows at least, but we need to also make another for loop inside of this one to target the second one, so five. So we'll do the same thing. So we'll say ints, we'll use J because it's the next letter in the alphabet, of course, <coughs> excuse me. And then J uh, five, because of course we have five here. And then we'll have J plus plus. And so right here is where we can start, you know, printing it out. So we'll have sout, and then we'll do falafel i j oops so this will print out um, each element of the array if we did it correctly so yeah it goes and i mean it goes ahead and, and does that but um this still looks kind of dumb so let's make it a um you know so we can let's visualize it basically make it look like i don't know how to explain it but yeah oh one second Oh, I see. So you gotta t change the take the line off because if you have the line on there, the ln that just creates every new um, out output on a new line. But if you just use print, it'll put it all on the same line until we use this one to make a new line. That's what this one is for, is to make a new line. So here we finally have a good visualization of the uh, multi-dimensional array that we made of falafel. And so let's look at it. So we have four rows here. So this is four. So one, two, three, four, and then five columns. So one, two, three, four, five. So like I said, the definition of a multi-dimensional array is arrays of arrays, right? So these, each one of these is an array and they have five elements each. So that's the most basic way to understand that. And it's really cool. So let's go ahead and test this further like before and say, oops, full off full blah blah so let's target this one the second to last one so that's on the fourth column so that'll be three because it's zero based of course and there's five in each one so we'll have f oh we want the fourth one so actually three 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 equals uh, 77 so now we'll print it out and we should update it 
and now we have 77 right there. So that's pretty cool. So we'll put a comma before, um, you know, each thing. Oops. So it doesn't get too confusing. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we'll run that. So now there's a comma of, um, before and after each element, which is good. So now we can look at it and it makes sense more because we, we have a two digit thing here compared to these, which are all one digit. So anyway, um, so yeah, we can set it to um, anything, you know, of course we can have, you know, one. So the second column, I mean row. So there it is right there, it's moved up. But anyway, um, let's try something here. We're gonna make a new array. And what we can do, they don't, they don't all have to have the same number of elements in each array, which is pretty cool. So with complex programs, you know, you'll have some variability. So um, let's try and make an array here, and we'll give it, uh, we'll have four rows again, and then we'll, each row will have one more element than the last row. So let's see what we can do. So we'll have int to, I mean, int falafel equals new, and then just leave the second one empty, and then. Uh, if we print that out, let's see what happens. And we get nothing because they're all empty. It's, we have four arrays, but they're all empty, so it just doesn't work. So um, to set that, we can target each one. So falafel um, zero, which will correspond to the first one of this one, right? So the first row equals, and then we can say new int um, one. Okay, and then we'll do that for each one. One, two, four. Oops, can't count. Anyway, so that'll create for the four rows. And we have an error here. What's the error? Oh, yeah. So they're all going to have one here. So just so I can demonstrate what this is even doing. Because it can probably be kind of confusing. What is the problem? Oh, maybe it's these. Um, we don't have them set to the right you know, numbers now. So we'll set this to equal. Uh, well, we have four rows now. So let's try that. Or no, we have, uh, sorry, this is a little confusing. Oh, this is the top one. So we'll have four rows and then we'll set this to one. Oh yeah, so there we go, sorry. I had it set, I was confused. And um, yeah, so we have, what we did here, we have our you know regular array, four rows, so four arrays. And then uh, we did, we can target each row with this and then assign it a certain number of elements in each array. So this is saying I'm targeting the first uh, row in the array, multi-dimensional array, and saying that it will have one element basically, okay? So yeah, so if we change this to equal two, then the next one will have two. So let's print that out. So it actually doesn't work because we, uh, this doesn't work for, uh, you know, like, there's multiple things in this one, so this is only going up one basically. So let's try doing two, and it might not work because it's yeah, it's because the first one has one, and then other ones have one, and this one has two. So like it'll just run out. It doesn't hardly make sense, but so we're gonna have to change something for this to be able to work, right? So if we want to fix this, we have to um, what we're trying to do here is increase these all you know up one every time. So let's go ahead and do that, and then just run it again. Of course, we get the error, right? Because I'll have this set to the wrong number. Oopsies. So there should be one, right? So that we get that. But if we want to fix it, um, we set these good. And that's the first step. And then plus I. So what this will do, um, I is going up every time, right? So if you're adding one every time, add it to the value of, you know, how many there are. So it's a little confusing, but um, it makes sense. It's just this is how many rows there are, and it's adding, and you know, cool stuff, and blah blah blah. So this is how you do it. Um, I'm not gonna explain this, of course, too much because it hurts my brain too. But anyway, you get the point. You can have a multi-dimensional array with you know a certain amount of arrays in it or rows, and then each array can have a different amount of elements inside of it. So that's the main point. You don't really have to understand this. I mean, you do if you want to print it out like I did. But the main point is that. So anyway, if we move on. We can actually create 3D arrays. This would be a 2D array, two-dimensional, but this um, will be a 3D array, which is a multi-dimensional, three-dimensional array, basically. So let's just get rid of all this. We don't need this anymore. And so we'll have three now. We're just adding that many. And this will, they would, blah, 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 blah. What this will be, will be, it's an array of multi-dimensional arrays. That's what it'll be. So it just gets even more complex from there. So 
let's go ahead and declare this. So we'll have three, oops, three, four, five. So let's try and figure out what this means. If it's an array of multi-dimensional arrays, that should mean that there are going to be three multi-dimensional arrays. Four, um, each one will have four rows, and each one will have five elements. That's exactly what that means. So let's go ahead and um, you know print this out like we did before. So we'll have four. And we'll say uh, int i, oops, int i is equal to one, or zero, and then int i is less than three, right? And then because we want it to go cycle to up up to three, and then i plus plus, actually to two, but yeah, it's only going to go to two because you know the way this works, we already learned about that, and that's exactly what we want because you know it's zero base anyway. So there we go, we got that, and so inside of that we're going to have to have these two also. So um, yeah, so We'll have another array, so 4 and j equals 0, j is smaller than 4, j plus plus, and then uh, we'll have another one, 4 and uh, ijk I, I believe is the next, sorry I don't know what that noise was, I was just trying to do the alphabet in my head and I failed really hard. So. Yeah, I'm smart. So now we can do sout um, print, just print, remember. And then um, what's it called? We want each one. So falafel, oops, falafel, falafel. There we go. So uh, I, J, K. And this should work, but of course we have to uh, do that thing where we have to clear it every time. So if we uh, just put here sout to make a new line and here to make a new line. So let's go ahead and try that. <clears throat> so there we go. It actually works. So we have three multi-dimensional arrays. That's good because that's what exactly what we wanted, right? So let's change this to like six. So we can confirm that this is exactly what I uh, say it is. So we still have three UIs that um, because we didn't change this up to three. So if we change this to six also. It should work from there. So yeah, now we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, and um, yeah. So and then we have, oops, and then we have uh, four, four rows for each one because we have four here as the target, and then each one has five uh, elements. Each array has five elements. So if we set the set it to seventy, nope, didn't work. That's because we didn't change this one. So put that to seventy. Let's see if it works and yeah it does work so it's pretty crazy um, so yeah I mean just play around with that but um if you're wondering like what are the uses even for you know for a multi-dimensional array but um, you know it's pretty common that you could use these you could use, use these for like matrices and math and stuff like that it looks very familiar to me like we did this in math and algebra too and uh, yeah so just math and stuff like that and you know cool stuff you'll be doing in the future and so, yeah, I hope this um, little tutorial wasn't too confusing. It can be confusing at first, but I just advise that you practice a lot and play around with it. And so I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment if you need any help, and I'll try and help you. And leave a like, I said, I think already, and subscribe. Peace.